So I'm in the phase of now hanging the indoor unit. I'm a little bit behind on this project because um, first and foremost, the bracket or the stand that is going to actually hold the outdoor unit was delayed in delivery. It should be here today, but shipping doesn't look like it will be. But I'll at least install the rest of the indoor unit. And then there was a secondary complication. That was my original spot to hang it was here. And then I realized that this is a load-bearing end wall and that window has what's called a header. So you have a thick piece of wood across the top and that is structural. So you should not alter that piece. So drilling through that to then put the line set down and outside became not an option. And I looked at some of the other walls in this room where I could mount it, but it would be very low on the wall. And for circulation and ventilation, that is the best wall for this. And so I was kind of bummed trying to figure it out. I'd almost come to the conclusion of putting it here, but hadn't completed on that thought yet. And I'll show you what I mean by the clearances. So if you're curious, the clearances for the external or the internal device, this is it. Should be about six inches from the ceiling and about six and a half feet from uh, the floor. And then obviously a small amount of clearance on either side, so like five inches on either side, so not a lot there, but enough to be able to open the top of the unit here, which folds up for the cleaning of the screens that filter out the particles going into the blower. And then these are the specs for the outdoor unit for anyone who's interested. But Needless to say, didn't want to drill a hole there. Then I was like, well, where am I going to hang this? So the cool thing about this unit is, is it gives you a couple of cool options, which is one, you can put the unit pushing through the wall directly behind the unit. So all of the piping or the line sets are hidden entirely. Or in my case, they have these punch outs and this is on this side as well as this side over here. So dependent on the direction you want the line set to leave the unit, luckily mine is on the side where this is, so I actually get the most amount of distance out of that. It'll come out from the side over here and I'll put a little piece of trim from the unit over to that and I'll mirror it on the other side so it just looks natural. And then I'll go into this little attic space and it's not really an attic space, I guess it's a crawl space, but um, this space here allows me to plummet from in here out into the soffit outside, which is perfect for what I'm trying to do, which is reduce the amount of piping along the exterior of the building. So I'll keep the installation clean as well as still being able to capitalize on the best location in this room specifically. Some other quick things that I've taken note of during this process. The pipe here, which is the drain out for your water, so when it condenses water inside and you get water that needs to leave the interior, this is gonna be one of the most important pipes to take note of. It has a little swivel clip in there that if you rotate this counterclockwise, it disengages. I don't know if I can zoom in any further than that. Yeah, it disengages from that little peg there. Um, so if I pushed up on that bottom piece that sticks out here, I can unhook it from that. And from the factory, this pipe comes on the opposite side. And this drain hole has a long, it's about two inches long plunger that's rubberized that then you move to the opposite side and fill into that hole. And you can see that there. So this here, you have to push back into the opposite side so it won't drip but it has this convenient hole in it. And most often I would expect someone to pick up a Phillips screwdriver and shove it in there to push it into place. Highly advise not doing that because you'll poke a hole in the bottom of it because Phillips are fairly sharp. So if you have one of these, like a flat ended long metallic pusher, then this would work really well or put a little bit of masking tape on the end of your screwdriver so you don't puncture that little piece because the last thing you want is water running down the wall under your unit from condensation. Now, on Signature Solar's installation video, um, the demonstrator shows that it's easier to feed the wires from the top through the back. Um, I personally found it just as easy to go from the bottom and I would recommend going from the bottom for a few reasons so that you can route it through this interior loop that was made specifically so that the wire doesn't press against other things while it's in here. So that is the guide for the wire itself. This is the electrical and communication cable. There is this unknown mystery plug here and I looked through the manual and their installation video does not describe what it does and this here just two pins is not connected to anything so I'll try and figure out what that is 
and it was but are uh, zip tied to this but it was zip tied through the bigger notch here and you want to save this bigger notch for the power cable which is much thicker and this little notch for it so it being this gray cable that it that plug on the other side the mystery plug let's call it because i don't have a name for it and then these plugs that you wire in will share the same press function and this just goes in here and then it sets back down once I'll, I'll route these with two hands eventually but you can see it goes there and then this cable would be in this wider side here the really neat thing is these lugs are all numbered and every wire well except for the ground has these cute little sleeves that tell you exactly which one they go to so you can see the number one there you can see the number three there the one that has this this is an electrical ground symbol. So this is your ground wire. They're usually green or yellow in most AC electric applications. And here, this is a green and yellow one. This one doesn't have the sleeve, but obviously it goes on this lug here. So those are some things that aren't labeled, some things that might be interesting. I'll try and get some information as to what this plug is for. I might be just like a service diagnostic tool function. I'm not really sure, but I'll dig into that and kind of let you guys know. I'll report back. But as of right now, I'm just getting all these lines bent and rerouted, putting everything together. I'm about to hang it up. And the next section of this video will be going through this wall and uncurling the full line set and running it down outside. Once I get this unit up here, I think I'm actually going to use half inch PVC for the drip line. It does come with some nice corrugated hose sets here, um, but I wanna have something that's a little bit more rigid. And I also wanna make sure that at the very end of this where it terminates outside that i put some sort of a screen on it and pvc is really great because you can buy all sorts of adapters so i can buy a little screen adapter and drill some you know a, a cap end and drill a bunch of little holes in it because these types of drain pipes are notorious for bugs and frogs especially tree frogs love the moist dark environment that these have so what will happen is that frog will try and get its way up in it'll get stuck die or it'll just stop up the water and you'll have water back up to the first place where it can come back out of the machine so you don't want that you want to make sure you mitigate anything from blocking this up and these pipes although they are great they don't have as many as many attachment features as switching to a direct half inch pvc which is what you would see for typical drain of HVAC units so I will be swapping this out for that uh, but as I said the next step in this video process will be putting the unit up there and then I'll show you even the trim once it's done so you can see what it can look like if you want to make it look nice as well as functional so stay tuned for the next piece of this I'll uh, stitch these together and you'll see next quick update I did drill the hole through there I'm actually in the process of patching it terrible patch job I know can't win them all um, so I am still going to use this wall and the exterior I can't use over there because of the header so I'm going all the way over here to avoid that header and this will bring me outside of the blinds or the shutters they're plastic shutters on the outside of the window they're probably about 12 inches off the side so this will bring me just outside past them and what I just drilled through was the um, the sheetrock I pried back the insulation so that I wouldn't catch and bind any of that. And then I just got the plug out. It might be hard to see in there. Now you're looking at the back of the vinyl. And this is where it gets tricky. So I took out the plug that was the wood for the sheathing on the outside of the house, pulled that off, pulled that other thing. And there's a, um, a video that I looked up because obviously if you're doing DIY and you're looking at my content for DIY solutions, I do the same thing. So a uh, YouTuber who's here in North Carolina, it seems, the video was tagged in Charlotte, uh, Hilltop, Sierra, Hilltop Sierra showed a video where using the drill with the same bit to cut your vinyl siding, what you do is you just reverse the direction. So you see that button there? I'll push it from the other side. And this will spin the teeth in the opposite direction or actually this is backwards because I was backing out. So it, this is forward and the teeth are going forward and cutting. And what I want to do is push it the opposite direction 
and have the teeth go in reverse. So the catching edge isn't what's cutting. It's the dragging of the tooth backwards that then melts and cuts the uh, vinyl so that you don't chip and splinter the vinyl, which is what you want to protect on the outside because that'll get really ugly if you get it all chopped up. So um, mad props to that YouTuber for doing DIY. I'll put a link to the video for that one as well so you can see that and go ahead and subscribe to their channel too because obviously little simple DIYers uh, that make their content around this are here to help you for that reason. So go support another creator, uh, also a North Carolinian. So good job, Hilltop Sierra. Uh, but I'll continue through to pass through this wall. The reason that I changed the orientation was that going over here and then diagonally down, there's another window in the garage over there. So I would have to keep going further down at a 45. And the distance that I'm losing by having the line set not go straight down by moving to a 45 is actually so significant that it will raise the unit up high enough on the wall that it'll be at like six feet in the air. And I really don't like that. This is actually the one complaint that I have about this unit is that these units are really great. They have everything you would need. The only thing that they could have done a little bit better is these line sets are 16.6 or about 16 and a half feet long. So the length that you have to put this at in order to be on the second story of a building, because it wants you to be six feet off of the floor or off of the, the lowest level of that room to the bottom of the unit. And then you have to obviously make some routing options to get through the wall, which means that this unit can't have the second story air unit interior have the exterior unit be ground mounted because most houses you're going to supersede that 16 foot and this could have easily been prevented had they just offered a 20 foot option or just packaged it with the 20 foot line set it's a couple extra feet it doesn't really make a difference for the total um, capacity you're not going to change much with these two little line sets there's just not enough fluid in there and gas in there to make a real difference so i really think that for EG4, if you guys are watching, make a version with a little bit longer line set because it is technically not recommended to extend the length of those. And obviously, if you're extending the line set, you kind of have to extend the uh, electric cord. And that's the part that gets kind of shady is some people will inevitably have to extend this, which you can buy new line sets. But when you extend this cable, most people are just going to splice to this cable and because it's an exterior function, that gets dangerous and you really don't want people to have hack electric work on DIY stuff. And you know that the DIY user is going to do that type of thing where they have to modify it to make it fit their situation. So making the device fit more situations than just first floor options would be great. Even my downstairs um, garage one, which will be on the first floor, will actually need a little bit longer. So it's gonna have to be moved the unit location because of the inconvenience of this shorter cable or uh, line set rather. Um, but again, that's why I originally was going in there, but because of the diagonal, I then had to reroute and go straight through the wall. But that's what brought me to here. Just wanted to give you the update on that. But the units up there, all the lines and everything are ready to go. So next we'll be punching through there and then feeding the pipes out the wall. So now we're on the outside and I just took a bunch of fiberglass insulation that I had and I tucked it in and packed it in and around the pipes inside that cavity in the wall. I did that from the inside and then I came to the outside and as a lot of my viewers know, this is one of those things that I love saving, which is these nice waterproof foam pieces that come in packaging for products. So I cut out a circle, it's roughly that two and a half inch hole that I drilled and then cut the crescent out it was the shape of those pipes and then packed it in there. And that'll help water from ever getting in there. I'm also going to use a sealant. So this is typically, I actually have a uh, silicone sealant that I could use. This one was just a hand one that I just figured would work. And then this is the exterior cap for which is all of the uh, line set hides. And this will go up and over. I won't be able to really do it with one hand very easily, but it'll kind of slide down over this and I'll put that, that caulking around this uh, and then pin it to the wall and then screw it in place. And this will keep the UV away from damaging the sleeves over the line sets. I'm also still gonna wrap it just so that they'll be tight against each other, keep the vibration of these away from moving and uh, then that will be everybody all taped up together. The weird thing I did notice is that the trip line isn't as long as the rest of the lines. 
So although I do want to feed it out of this at the end, it'll actually terminate just before that. So I'll have to put a little hole punched in the side of that. And I'll show you once I'm down off the ladder. Clearly taking a video on the ladder is not my favorite. And I do need to pressure wash up top here, which I haven't done yet. So now that I have the ladder out, I'll uh, finish installing this and wipe down the wall behind it. Uh, put in all of the line set covers, and then I'll show you what that looks like as it's all cocked and sealed into place. Next step is to bring this outside and put the wall mounts up to put it in place. I'll have to do a couple of measurements just to make sure I can screw in the uh, refrigerant lines at the height that it needs to be. But as of right now, I have the line set hide, so that's the little thing that conceals the line set. I gotta actually remove that bottom section and put the flex pipe on so I can get it to the right spot. I've gotta move it over by just a slight amount, probably over to about here, because the unit will, I don't want it to cover this. So the unit will be on stands against the wall and it'll step off and it'll convert this 30 amp RV hookup into a pull breaker or a quick disconnect. Uh, and then just wire it in that way and then replace the breaker in that to a 20 amp. So it's appropriately sized and it has the appropriate by code breaker. And then that's just the interim solution. And eventually that will actually have solar as the primary power function for this. But as you can see, this is second story. That's as far as the line sets can come down. That is the absolute closest to the ground that they can get. So again, if they had given an extra four feet that would have made it perfectly to the ground and that could have been a ground mount unit even on a regular second story house and this is not dimensionally out of standard i mean this is the house with the crawl space so pretty much standard heights for all the floors and everything else in between so yeah the one one uh, drawback of the system is just that the line sets are just a hair too short 20 feet would have been perfect Okay, so this is the wall bracket, and these are the anti-vibration functions here. These slide on. It's a nice enough wall bracket. I do actually, they're done identically, and I would prefer them symmetrical, so I need to swap these bolts so that the, that's a thing. Um, but anyway, because this is tapered, so you can't pre-mount this to adjust for height, this insets into the footing of the conditioner unit itself, the outside section and it won't be exact because it compresses some, this makes calculating the exact height that it's going to be on the side of the building difficult. And since you have to hold it up, I actually am super fortunate. I have a tractor, which I literally use for everything. Um, but now I'm trying to lift this up to line these two so that they will have enough um, distance or enough uh, clearance to thread and enough room to move make sure that there's enough room for the unit to not be in front of that. Uh, it's a bit weird. So I want to kind of offset it a little bit and it has to be higher than uh, a certain height so that it can line up. But I have to figure out the height of the unit in order to be able to tell where the bracket will mount so then I can put the mounting plate on, arms on, so I can figure out all of this. But needless to say, this is some awkward calculus in order to get to the exact height of where those pipes need to be bent in order to attach because I won't know the exact of that until the unit's held roughly in place and so I'm having to do that I was going to build a little scaffolding thing to do it and I was like now I should just do that with the tractor it'd be way easier so I put some cardboard in there to baby proof it and bungee it on uh, but needless to say most folks again probably won't have this option so this if you're mounting it on the side of a house Typically, you'll just go higher than where you'll need and you'll have a little bit of extra slack. I want to keep this unit as low as possible. I don't like the idea of it being up high, and that was why I rerouted from the top down. Um, you can see there that nice piping. The tractor's out, and the Jeep's now out from under cover. It's been hiding for a couple months. I had to keep it under rain cover because, obviously, if it rains, Jeep's leak. That's just how they roll. Um, but yeah, so needless to say, tractor had to be involved in this project. This is it fully installed. I'm about to go turn it on. I put all the flex pipes, my drain out pipe here, I plumbed it all through. I've got all the nice stuff cleaning it up. Uh, the power cord, I do need to put the clamps on these and this will actually be switched out and the same with this one. This will have a clamp piece on it. Uh, this power cord will differ. I will put, and I have just bought the uh, pull 
blade fuse for this and I'll be reconditioning this, my 50 amp service, into a 20 amp and it will be the thing that supplies this. Something that I found really interesting about this, which I think everyone who's installing this should be aware of, this is a 220 to 240, but it does not use neutral. And that is okay sometimes, but I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, it just does this and you can get away with doing that. It's just not what I would recommend doing any electrical wiring with. Um, but again, if you're not familiar with how that works specifically, if you're doing the 220 model, it might be worth your time having an electrician come and just make sure that this is done properly, especially with the types of wiring, the THHN that has to go through this type of conduit because it's exterior, and then you can't use Romex through exterior conduits and all of the little things that go along with NEC code. Um, Last night when I mounted this, I'd measured it a million times over and you can see the hole there. I got to plug that hole still. I mounted it an inch too low. Um, and this is again why I really wish that this had come with a little bit longer of uh, a run for the line set because I could have just set this on the ground, but now I have to have it wall mounted. And because it's wall mounted, I have to have it at a very specific height in order to be able to capitalize off of the line length and so on. So just some notes along the way. There is no neutral, that's something normal. So I've got the remote batteries in, super intuitive. I actually do like that there's a button that says light on it, so you can actually just turn off the display light, which is behind the fascia of the unit, so when it's off, it doesn't even look like there's a display there, it shines through the plastic, which is super cool. Uh, I ran it on the heat cycle, now I'm doing the cold cycle, seeing how long it takes to get down to cold. It is starting to cool down now, pretty good. Um, unit seems to be working exactly as intended. The trick is, is right now I'm running a fan. Dogs love this because this hole upstairs has been pretty hot. So I'll turn this fan off so you can hear the noise difference. I'll actually turn the overhead fans off too. And you'll hear how quiet this unit is. This is actually noisier by quite a bit. So this one makes noise, but compared to that, window unit, the ceiling fans, and everything else, it's pretty quiet. It's really, really quiet. And you can feel the air coming out of there. It's freezing cold right now. I wish I had a thermal camera. I have an infrared uh, point and shoot camera, or uh, ther thermal uh, sensor or whatever it is. Thermometer, I guess. Uh, there's a name for it, but my brain's not working. Um, but because it's a reflective surface, it'll probably misread that anyway. But that is super, super cold. It's automatic, I have it on the flap function. You can have it static and all sorts of different settings here. But needless to say, I'm gonna put some trim wood there to kind of hide the line set and kind of continue it on the other side so it'll look like a little beam across the top. But it works, it's in, it's blowing really cold air, it's in a great location. Its ability to be in that location is dynamic because of the way that the line sets are set. Only one complaint, and I'll say this a hundred times over, I wish that those line sets were just a little longer. Um, so if you're doing this, make sure you understand that the line sets aren't at a two-story height. They're more accommodating for a single-story building or first floor. Or in some rare cases, you might have the instance of being at the right height in the room and being able to go straight outside and right to the ground but even then, if there's any elevation lift from the foundation or a standard floor height, you're probably not going to be able to have your unit mount on the ground. They do have some pretty good ground rack mounts. I found those. I was going to use one, but they're actually just shy of the height that I needed to make this work. So just consider that. Uh, this again is a 220 if it's plugged into AC power. So you do want to understand how that works, the code requirements, the pulls um, for that. But if you're pretty handy with reading code and understanding what the requirements are, I think anyone could probably do this pretty easily by themselves. Um, and it's really nice. It's super quiet, great remote control, super simple. I'll, I'll install the little bracket that holds the remote control so I can have it mounted up. It slides right in there so you can have that on the wall. Anyone can use it. These buttons also are, if I can go in the, the dark a little bit here, you can see they glow in the dark which I'm a huge fan of glow in the dark stuff because I'm a nerd. Um, so otherwise, great experience. Um, 
highly recommend. Just be mindful of some of the specialty tools that you'll need. You'll need a hole saw to be able to punch through the wall, two and a half up to three and uh, basically a third or three and a quarter. Um, you probably want some extra insulation. You're gonna need a wire that plugs it in, whether that's the solar or the AC, it does not come with those. The clamps that go around the wires as they go into the outside unit and um, some brackets or mounts if that unit isn't on the ground. So if you're on a second story, you're probably going to have to grab our wall mount it or something else. And then just make sure that the unit hanging tool that you have is really good at sound dampening because you don't want that vibration in the space below. So wherever that wall is, mine luckily is in the garage. So there's not a lot of exciting things happening down there. Um, so that noise of the vibration of the outdoor unit won't be too disturbing to the uh, surrounding area. But uh, otherwise, I would highly recommend it. It was a little bit longer to install than I expected, but obviously it was my first time installing something like this. And I put the line set covers on the outside so that they'd be UV protected and I went through everything meticulously. So I think if you um, were to speed run this, you could do it much quicker. And ironically, I've gotten two of these. So this first one, which is second story, a little bit more complicated and has a little bit more nuance involved in it, is going to have taken me longer than the next one, which I'll install. And I'll do an install video for that one so you can see how quickly you could do one. So I'll speed run that one. I'll do a time lapse, basically, test of how quickly I can run it now that I know all the components, how to bend everything, how to get everything in line, uh, tape everything up. Uh, and I'll show you the comparison of how quickly you could do this if you were to do it. With, um, without these restrictions of basically height. And so I really wanted to test this out. So this wall, you can see this window and we'll go outside and compare this. If I put this phone really close to the wall, you can hear the unit, but it's actually from the window. It's not from the wall. You can barely hear that hum. I can actually hear the condenser for the outside two-ton unit that makes noise over there that's probably 15 feet from the door and you know 35 feet from me here, maybe 40 feet from me here, uh, more than I can hear this unit. This is really, really quiet. Really close to it. You can hear it in a nice amount of heat coming off of the unit here. Um, but yeah, it's super quiet. I gotta wrap these up a little bit. You see the condensation already forming all over these little guys. And I'm waiting to see how long it takes for water to start coming out my little lights here. So we'll find that out soon. Um, all in all, I would say this was a success. A little bit more tricky than I expected it to be, but again, I think this is a great project for a DIYer and especially once uh, I have my engineer coming out for the structural engineering stamp to be able to put solar on the house and that will allow me to power this exclusively off of DC photovoltaic power and so right now I'm, and that's why I'm not putting a lot of time and effort into the wiring of this with the AC end of it it's not how I'm going to be using this this is going to be supplemental cooling so that it reduces my energy bill all of the additional cooling that I'll be doing in the house will be with the regular two ton units that are on the back side of the house over by the pool and this is just so that anytime that the sun is out, I can capitalize off of free power driving this unit to cool the house. So they'll run simultaneously, but if this cools the upstairs to the point where that unit doesn't have to turn on, then that unit isn't being utilized as much and it will be free to have tr basically reduced the heat in the house during those times. So again, this is just a way you could save money. And again, I would love to hear, I asked in the last video, uh, someone had noted that they were looking at, at putting um, some of these units in some outbuildings. I wanna know about some of the solutions that these have created for folks who have exclusive DC power option. So only solar available at their endpoint. And this makes it possible for you to be able to air condition and heat. And I think that's going to be some of the most extraordinary functionality of this. I come from Maine originally, and I'm thinking of all of the little hunting camps or little camps along lakes, some of which do not have power, where these types of units could be great in the summer for keeping the humidity away, as well as keeping your house heated in the winter. And even if you're not there, you're not spending money on running the electric to the place or running the unit during that time, but it will keep that 
the environment warmer so that, for instance, the pipes don't freeze or and the house doesn't get moldy in the summer when you're not there. Because a lot of folks for summer camps in the north will just turn off all of the power and that will just create a lot of humidity and mold and moisture or too much cold and they'll have to drain their pipes out. So these types of units are great for that. I would love to hear your feedback on how you've used them or how you could conceive of using one of these in your personal life.